What is going on? Welcome back to the channel. And today we are doing a DIY project, something that I have been wanting to do for a very, very long time. And that is build a powder coating oven. So most powder coating ovens are very, very expensive. They range from $3,000 all the way up to $25,000. So the oven I'm building today, I think I could build for around 250 to 500 bucks. And usually this size oven is six to $8,000. So it's a very, very, big cost savings. I've already found a used oven, a used house oven off of Facebook Marketplace. I got it for 75 bucks. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the store, grab some galvanized steel sheets so I can make the inside of the oven. And then I also need to grab some square tubing so I can make the frame of the oven. Once I have this done, I could put all the guts out of the house oven into my oven and everything should be fine. Ovens are very, very simple. They are just pretty much sheet metal and most house ovens are coated because of grease and stuff. It just makes them a lot easier to clean. Since I'm powder coating, it really doesn't matter. But once I have all that stuff in there, it should work very well. And the great thing about it is that when I need to powder coat something, I don't have to take it to a place, wait for them to do it and usually taking stuff to places to get powder coated takes weeks or months. So it's just a really good solution that you can do by yourself, very cheap. I mean, if you have the space to store this thing, I think it's gonna be a little bit big, but um, I should be able to powder coat all the subframes and all that stuff that I've been wanting to powder coat, especially because I'm gonna powder coat the rear subframes on the FC and it'll just be a really good solution. So let's get to work grabbing all these parts and then start getting all this stuff put together so we have a powder coating oven to actually use.
finally able to get the powder coat oven all together. There are a few things that I still have to do. I need to add some screws up here. I also need to add a seal. I'm probably gonna order one off of eBay. There's uh, the one in the old oven, the parts oven right here, but it won't be long enough. So I'll have to use that one and then I'll get another one and I think it should seal the whole door. This oven is pretty massive. It might not look like it on video, but uh, we have an RPF one in here and uh, yeah, look how big this is. I drilled some holes. I need to just put some hooks in, but uh, other than that, I think uh, we'll be good. Put three hooks in there. Um, I did put a center support so I can mount some hooks and then I used some fiberglass insulation. That's what they use for ovens in the first place. I also added the switch for the light. So we have two elements. We have the bottom element, the top element. We have the normal light. We have the little, um, you know, thermoprobe up there on top where it's supposed to be. I used the glass from the original oven so we can see in here if we turn on the, the light. It's a little bit dirty. I need to clean it up. But uh, other than that, it's good to go. I'm gonna also add the control panel right here on the side and uh, then I'm gonna have the, another little switch so I could turn the light on and off, just not by opening the door. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull the cover right here off and uh, get this off because I still need to cut a hole to mount the controller, but I wanna test this thing out. So I wanna run it through a cycle and see if it will get up to operating temperature. I mean, it has enough, way more fiberglass insulation in it than the ovens do. So I think it's a lot more insulated than it would be in, you know, a house oven. So it should, should really hold the heat well. The wiring all cleaned up on the power coating oven. So now everything is zip tied more clean than it was before. I also, when I tied up all the wires, it did give me enough room to not have to add any more wiring. So I'm gonna cut the hole in the side cover for the controller. I'm gonna mount it on the side. I think that will work very well. And then I also need to add that light switch. And I think after that, we could put the cover on, put the controller in. I'll have to eventually make a little fascia for the cover just to cover it. Okay, oh, I was trying to set the clock, I think was what's going on. Bake. Oh, I can feel them heating up. Oh man, she's, whoa, she's getting really hot, really quick, man. Now I have the clasps on the door and everything is good to go for a test fire. I was gonna screw in, I got the stuff for the seal and I was gonna screw it in, but the screws that I got, they literally, I did two of them and it just broke the heads off. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna test fire this, see if it holds 400 degrees. And if it does, we're gonna try powder coating this lower control arm or this rear control arm hub assembly for the FC. That's really the only reason I built this power coating oven so I could get my rear subframe and my knuckle and everything powder coated for the FC so I could put all of this power by max suspension on it and so that it looks proper so it doesn't look really, you know, all the old components are really gross and this will just make it look that much better. So let's try to fire this thing up, see if it holds 400 degrees and uh, if she holds 400 degrees, which I think it will, it got hot really quick inside. There's plenty of insulation. Hopefully we don't have any issues. 400 degrees, let's try her out. Just ran and got something from the store and what I got was this little thermometer. So the controls for the oven let you set the temperature, but it doesn't let you view what the temperature is. And after I let it go and run up to 400 degrees or what I thought was 400 degrees, I guess we'll see once I actually have a thermometer in there because it was very, very hot in there. It felt like 400 degrees, but you know, what does 400 degrees feel like? So now we'll have a thermometer in there. This will just be like a little bit of extra reassurance so I know exactly what the temperature is. I added the thermometer. I really like kind of how it is. It's magnetic. It just sticks on there. I do need to drill a hole where I'm gonna finally mount this thing, but I wanna make the panel for this first. So I'm gonna run a test run right now, 
see if it goes up to 400, see if it holds 400, and we'll just kind of go from there. So we have the oven pretty much complete. It's actually usable now. I'm ramping it up to 400 degrees. What I'm gonna do, this is the test ramp. I'm gonna modify the control arm slash knuckle for the FC. So my wheels are very, very close. And although the rim doesn't touch the lower control arm, the tire just barely, barely rubs it. And I wanna mitigate this situation. If I ever wanna go any wider tires, and I think once I take all the camber out of the back of the car, and uh, I think we'll have more of an issue with it rubbing because the wheel will be straighter, which means the tire will kind of be a little bit closer to this section right here. So I've already started cutting it. What I'm gonna do is cut this all the way down to this weld right here. And I'm also gonna cut back here on this mark right here. I uh, pretty much just did an inch and an inch, and then I'm gonna just flip everything or just recess it down, re-weld it. So then this part will actually be on this seam right here, as well as this right here. And I'll just kind of box that in just so we can have a little bit more room for wider tires and not have any issues when we adjust, do the final adjustments with the alignment. We won't have any issues with the wheel rubbing, the tire rubbing, excited the oven for powder coating actually works got the first part powder coated a piece for the fc rx7 and i must say the time spent building this thing was well worth it so i have a little under 500 in this oven like i've said before an oven this size from a company it may be a little bit better um the ones i have seen haven't really had that great of controls. They just have like a, a knob on them. And uh, you know, to each of their own. This has controls out of uh, an oven. And uh, you know, this is what I use for the timer. And I also use it for temperature. I'm gonna remount the probes. So I mounted the probes pretty high in the oven. And uh, I think it's just real inconsistent because heat rises. So I'm gonna mount the probes more to the center of the oven. I think I'll get a nice, you know, a better temperature readout and it will control the temperature a lot better. But for the first part, this was the test run. And I mean, this thing came out really nice compared to what it looked like before. It's just so nice, it's glossy, you know, it's so much better than painting something. It's just all nice and clean and glossy. I mean, it's a really nice way to make something that looked, I mean, we'll check out the one that 
This is what they look like before. I'm gonna do the subframe as well, and this will fit in the oven. I'll just have to hang it. But this is what the knuckles look like before. They were just, somebody painted them, spray painted them in purple. They just really didn't look that great. And they just were really, I don't know, to me, they're just kind of gross. And then somebody also spray painted this, and you can see that's just spider cracking the paint. So it wasn't prepped very well. And I think this is just, you know, the icing on the cake. Now that I have a powder coating oven that I could use, I could just go and sandblast my stuff, come powder coat it, and uh, it'll be nice, good to go. I don't have to wait for, you know, powder coaters. Usually, it's they're always either super backed up or they say they're not, and then they just take so long to powder coat your parts. This way I could do it on demand. If I need something done that day, I mean, it doesn't take that long to blast something. It doesn't take that long to powder coat something. So, and then another thing is it's my parts. I'll be more thorough when I coat it. So there won't be any missed spots, anything like that. So I'm really glad that I spent the time to make this oven and I'm going to end the video here. The timer is just, I don't know how to make this thing. I think it just goes off of the, uh, the temperature, but, I'm gonna end the video here. I'm really glad that this oven worked out, that it came together so well. It looks very professional and uh, everything is really nice. I'm gonna put some bolts up here to hold this down and I'm also gonna make a little access, um, you know, a little cover to cover this. So this fits in there really nice. So it looks really good. So if you like these videos, make sure to click the subscri subscribe button, throw a thumbs up, throw a comment below. I'll throw some links in the description of pieces that I use to make this oven, but um, you know, your local metal store can help you out tremendously building an oven just like this. And uh, as always, see you guys next time.